over everything again. We'll have some discussion it's about winter. it. And oh, then we'll go to the main meeting that that too. Too. the council chambers. Oh, so, so, and your name will be somewhere on it. So just watch where you're looking at. Oh, on the. Yeah. Okay. Kind of so, so, yeah. 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 But it's here. I'm like, I think it would be Got better here too as of late. So that is very sensitive. This meeting is recorded. Okay. So when they say that we're live, anything you say is being recorded. They're just and very sensitive mic that we used to have. So just a fair warning on that. So and then I've lived a life of footprint. Sorry. You're used to it then. And add a few more, perfectly kept on YouTube. So my ADD is also makes me say it. But Tom and Madeline are just Tom and Jazz. Good to know. Okay. Well, I'm not trying. Do I need to mute? Are you willing to share my screen? That's an odd choice. In here? Yeah, we're in here. Annie. So, Annie. Um, Annie. It says somebody else is sharing, yeah. so I can see. Awesome. But I'll remember your face. Yeah, yeah I'm a face hair clothing person, so yeah. if you change one of those things, right. then I should yeah. start. Like, I'm not sure you know you anymore. I guess. Should be a message. Yeah. So, then. And that's the whole second, you know, motion, second, and then voting. Sure. Order. It's yeah. Okay. But I mean, that's a lot of it. Well, very well. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yes. Are you going to do yours or am I going to do yours? That's for you. That's Jason. Is it not sharing? Did I share the wrong one? Oh, I do know it says I'm sharing. Sure. Okay. So I don't know why it's better. <laughs> <They're not laughs> His kid just come play with me. I don't know how that I don't Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. 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 watch the present rolls. Who's the best? Yeah. 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 You got it. Thanks for bringing it here. It's been a while. Hey, very, very good. Yes, sir. Hope you guys have a good time. Holidays, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, Sarah, sure, we didn't order much of milk. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, you are welcome. See what I can do. That's why you're paper net, right? See you later. Okay. Okay. So, we have a little bit of a guest. We've got a little bit of a first time. Well, it's always a pressure. Come on. So Murray, Murray is running a few minutes late. So we can start now. So the first couple items, yeah, let's start now. First couple items. Are you introduction to say? Yes, let's do introductions. Thank you for that. I'm reading. Good. Ten hour though. It's for me. All right. Well, that's interesting. Would like you guys to introduce yourself to everybody here, so everybody knows who you are. Thanks for, for volunteering and joining us in this awesome effort. Um, go ahead. Uh, my name is Mike Carpenter, um, 50 year resident of Oro. Born and raised. raised. You're not that old? In a few months. <laughs> 49. But uh, yeah, so I lived here all my life, mostly north, northeast Oro, around Windsor Elementary. <coughs> so, uh, just excited to participate, get involved. Have you lived in the same area of Warren your whole life as well? Grew up next to the Union Canal. They only live just off 1600 um, behind where Anderson Lumber used to be. Um, yeah, pretty okay. much. Yeah. My wife grew up in front of the uh, stake center that's by Tippinogus on 1600. So Hopefully. we both lived in the area our whole lives. So uh, our first apartment was behind Macy's, it was a trailer park at the time. Right? So, yeah. And we lived in Amron Village. Yeah, we live in our house that we've been in for about 30 years. There's no been Anderson Lumber for 30 years, has it? It's been a long time since it was Anderson Lumber, but yeah. it was Anderson Lumber for a very long time. So oh, good to have you, Mike. That just sticks. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And I'm Helena Kleinlein. I'm a three year resident of Orm. Awesome. Uh, originally came from England via California, via New York, and now in, uh, in, in Utah. Oh, how long have you been in Utah? Three years. Three years total. And three years total. Three years total. Three years, yep. Was New York before that? Yes. What part of New York? Uh, we were Western New York, so not okay. the city. Okay. And California before that? And California. Yeah, it's good to get a new perspective. Yeah. Yes. So I, I have seen a variety of right. cities and how things have done. Perfect. <laughs> I, I came to stay to Utah from New York. Yeah. Where in New York for you? Queens. Staten Island first. Got it. And Queens, Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. Very different. We hope in we hope in New Jersey and Hoboken. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, Helena, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Um, everybody else is here. Do you want? Would you please introduce yourself to them? Yeah. Oh, okay. great. Do you want the other planning commissioners to go to? Yeah. Sure. Keep going around the room. That way. Yes. We can. I actually know both of them. <laughs> is it? Should I be worried? Mike and Helen. <laughs> well, if you want to be worried, <laughs> yeah, perhaps you should be. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I was uh, I was just past where Helena went to school in England within a month. Huh? A place called Beaconsfield. She remembers that place with funds, right? Boarding school. Oh. That's how I was raised. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Madeline Coven, Vice Chair. Hey, Simpson Carr, Chairman. I'm Jerry Christmas. I've been on the commission about six months. Six months, yeah. I'm sorry, what was your first name? Jeff. Jeff? Jerry. 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 Okay, Jerry. thank you. I'm Kay Wagstaff. I work with Associate Managers. Awesome. Oh, okay. oh. I'm Ruth Rock. I'm Excellent. Uh, I'm Grant Allen, one of the Senior Planners. Matt Taylor, Senior Planner. Sam Kelly, City Engineer. Cheryl Vargas, Associate Planner. Jason Bench, Planning Manager. I'm Ryan Clark, Development Services Director, and I grew up on 16th North. Oh, nice. By Murano Lumber. Oh, I remember Murano. Four years. Absolutely. So just to let everybody know, if there's okay, next month, so the first meeting in February, it's that time of year we do elections for the chair and vice chair. Okay. So if you're not here, just warn you right now, you might not. Just you may be the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to do it today, just so everybody knows everybody and get to, you know, then next time we'll, we'll do that as well. So Very good idea, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess we, and then we have one more member on the way, Mary Law. He should be here in a minute. All right. Item 3.1 is Majestic Heights. It's a preliminary and final plat at 437 South 800 East. This shows you where it's located. And the biggest issue with this one, if you look at the, the map that on, the, on my left, I think it's your left too, you can see those, those um, teal colored lines within the red lines, mm -hmm. th those are just nuisance strips. So they're basically paying two tax notices for one should, well, it should be one property. So this is just cleaning up the lot lines. Those houses directly to the east, they are platted. And so they're just making their lines, property lines go back to meet those property lines and to clean up those what we call nuisance strips. Um, they're both lots of records, so they haven't been platted before, which is why we have a preliminary plat. And this is the proposed plat showing that their property lines now go all the way back to the other properties on the east, and it will just be one property instead of two or three in some cases. This is what the street view looks like, and we recommend approval. Do you have any questions for me? How do they end up with those? Okay. This is strips. Just the way the county, either the way it was developed, or a farmer sold off a little chunk here and then ended up selling the rest of it. And they just have not cleaned it up all the time. And so lots of record, meaning they haven't been planted before. So it's just little pieces that they bought into creating a lot to build a home on it. Back in the they were consolidated. Back in the early days, we really didn't have an issue. I mean, we weren't here at the time, but they didn't have an issue with building a house on the lot that was combined in multiple properties. Now we typically don't allow that. So we have them clean it up or plant it before they build a home on it. So these are just kind of remnants. And there's there's many of these throughout the city and other cities that just cleaned up over time. So who, who initiated the cleanup? We did the city. Um, I, I think the owner on the property to, is a lot owner too. It was the one to the north. He um, wanted to do something. He put a shed on the, on the little tiny section, nuisance strip. Well, you can't have an accessory structure on a lot that doesn't have a house. So now he has an illegal structure on that little tiny strip. So he wants to make the whole thing right. So he's really the one who initiated it. Then at Clinton, he wanted to, then because his lines and the one to the south were, they had two or three strips in there. Then she became involved too. And she actually bought, hers kind of gets out a little bit because she's actually bought some property from the guy behind her. So that's how all this mess gets. You just, I need 10 feet, you know, or I need five feet or whatever. So this is just cleaning that all up. But the one to the property to the north is the one who initiated it. And to kind of give you guys a little surveying, line surveying one along, a lot of record is described just with language. So it's like beginning at a point, then it's north 50 feet, then it's 50 feet. And so it's just a written description. Once it's platted, there's a map associated with it, and that really helps clean up the ambiguities in those property lines. I did see looking at some of the names of people in neighboring lots. One is the last name Hawks, George Hawks, who's my uncle, but he died three years ago. Wouldn't be the same George Hawks, but I'm, I'm most curious who this George Hawks is. <laughs> Oh, you have, a, you have an address? I don't know. I think that's true. I can go knock on the door. So just a little background on just 
for your guys' sake coming in. So we have four items on the Planning Commission. Tonight. Two of them, the first two are, are things that the Planning Commission themselves deal with. So the a preliminary plan or a final plan that we're dealing with tonight is an administrative action, meaning that the Planning Commission is the final approving authority. You basically are the one that reviews the final steps because it gets to this point, staff has already looked at it, make sure it complies with all the requirements. So really, it's just, this is just an open forum for citizens if they want to come, but it's also a final review to make sure that staff hasn't missed something or whatever. So those, the, and you'll get the feel of it as we go over time, but there are many projects that will just come to planning commission, site plans, different things like that. The other two items on there are public hearings that we're actually changing either an ordinance or modifying a general plan. Those are public hearings and they also are finally approved by the city council. So the planning commission acts as a recommendation, a recommending body that reviews it, make sure they if you feel comfortable with what's proposed and then make a recommendation. If you don't, obviously you can make your own recommendation based on what either staff has provided, or if you feel there's public input that you know, you know modify your recommendation, uh, you can do that as well. So you'll get that over time, but just wanna let you know that that's, the first two items are something that the planning commission deals with. So the motion, you'll see the motions or something that the planning commission approves or you know, and then the other two the planning commission recommends because you're sending it on to the city council. So just a brief introduction on that. We'll, we'll do other trainings. If you have questions, please ask and we can address those. Okay. Anything else on this one? All right, the next one is lots, lots. They're amending lot 19. They actually want to split this one lot into two lots. <clears throat> this is where it's located. So they're splitting. You can see there's an existing home, so that home will stay. But they also have a carport, and I think like a, a cellar or something in front of the carport. <clears throat> Those are all. That's going to be removed. So. That's why there's a demolition plan because those those are being removed and they're going to put the um, access for the lot in the back there. So this is showing you what the site plan would look like. It has the carport removed. It has the driveway or access to the lot two in the back. And they moved the driveway for the one in the front to the other side. Mm -hmm. um, this is a proposed plat showing the two lots. And this is what it looks like currently. So you can see that carport that will be removed. The house has to be a minimum of five feet from the, the drive access. So that's why they have to take that down because it wasn't enough room with that there. And we recommend approval. Do you have any questions on this one? It's basically taking one large lot, making two smaller lots and they can get another home in the back. So how do they get access to the back? Then? On the south, they're, they're so taking those trees, trees in the carport down, and then they'll just go on that go back to south the side. Okay, so there's a driveway. Yeah, so the 20 foot access. So the existing drive goes away and gets moved to the other side of the house, yeah. and then they put a long drive into the for the back one. So there would be an easement on the final plan for lot two in the back. So they yeah. lot one yeah. cannot park in the driveway. Yeah. You know, what would they park their cars just on the street? Oh, in the back? For the original house? Oh, the original house is pretty driveway in there. Put a driveway on the other side? Yeah. They still have, on the... On the right side, I see. Thank you. North the top side. side. I guess it's north there. Okay. And again, this, this is a doorway of putting a chimney there instead. So this access is just for here. Because that's a lot line. Okay. And they can't, they can't lock that by parking there. They call that a flag lock, right? Correct. Flag lot or deep lot? And just for your information, the deep lot has to be 125% of the underlying zone. So if it's an RA, the back lot has to be 10,000 square feet. So we do require the back lots to be larger just because of the Actually, trying to squeeze in the back and having a house in your backyard, we make them a little larger. Okay. And that stem, the driveway can't count as part of, of that 125%. So it's a, a really large lot, actually. Yeah. Any questions on this one? Yeah, I do. My, uh, my neighbor's grandparents look like two houses down. Oh, we used to go over to their house all the time. It's a beautiful lot. Oh, you know that house? Yeah. <coughs> That's great. 
So 3.3 is an amendment to the height, overall height requirements in the C2 zone. Uh, if you're familiar with the city council approving the city moving forward with the new city center building, yep. uh, in talking with the architects, as outlined in the staff report, in order to get not a big building like this where you have such a high ceiling, I don't know if you've toured other city centers that the conference or the council chambers are typically a higher ceiling. In order to do that or accomplish that in this building with a 48 foot height maximum height requirement in the C2 zone, they want to have a parapet that goes above that. So in, store, in order to have a parapet on the, the roof, so it protects people from falling off, uh, they could build it without that, but that isn't really a safe way to do a larger building. So in order to get about a 15, 15 foot height ceiling in the city council chambers, uh, they have to raise it to the maximum of 48 feet in order to get that parapet. They're asking, and the city's asking basically for us to modify the ordinance and it would be specifically for a municipal building. So mm -hmm. if the city builds another building, obviously in the city center, they would have that same option. In the C2 zone. But it, in the C2 zone, mm -hmm. but it's limited to C2 zone and municipal buildings and it's four feet. So it's not the maximum height, it's simply the maximum height of 48 plus, plus four, four feet. feet. Yep. I don't know if you're familiar with parapets, just in case you're not, that's the parapet wall is the one that surrounds. So this is, mm -hmm. this would be a parapet or this would be a parapet. It's kind of surrounds and it can act as also a screen for things that are on the roof, just mechanical stuff like that. Are we sure. have questions? Right? No, no, we are right through it. It makes sense. Okay, so we are limiting it yeah, the scope to just municipal buildings. So the white membrane there on that roof, you would see that is 48 feet. That's as small as that. Any any questions? Or? Is there any reason why we wouldn't approve this? No. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. I mean we have to go through the process, right? Okay, so clear. Yeah. That's about a year ago. We're pretty adamant about maximum heights, right? Within hundred feet, it's 35 feet. Outside of that 100 feet, it's 48 feet max, and they're pretty pretty you know wanting to keep that so what's, what's the current height of this building including the parapet it's a shorter i don't know probably 35 yes yeah. yeah. and as the new building will be built it'll be up on the further forward in the parking lot for the forward on center street so it's not that it's not going to be closer to a residence or anything like that no, no it's actually like, so, but it will be closer to the street so it'll be bigger and more domineering okay. on the road yeah that'll be so my question still remains is there any reason not to approve this what, what what's the risk other than i guess traffic risk i said a precedent yeah. governments breaking their own rules yep <laughs> they can do it right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I would say that's the biggest can't. reason to say no is because government should be the last person to be able to break the rules. Well, this is we're changing. Well, that's what it should be. So we're changing the rules. We're changing the rules, yeah. But only for themselves. True. But so, I think it's a good Which I think is not a good precedent, especially after your rezone. So, so let me ask differently. Is the C2 zone within 100 feet? I mean, could. Could you build a, something across from a resident that would now, <coughs> in this area, that now would uh, be different than what is allowed? So the, the C2 zone on the city center only goes back to about mid parking lot. Okay. The rest of it is residential. Okay. So the city center property itself, the, the park and all that is a residential zone. So we would have to come back through and the council would have to change the zone if we want to do something like your proposal. So so you could do it in the it's parking lot by the, the library. library. So by the library. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And we've done it we've done right. it for the yes. residents for sure. just on the Alpine's right, the Alpine building and the Great Union. We we talked about parapet a lot when we had open dynamic rooms okay. and cell towers. It, it wasn't so those changes have happened before for residents and businesses. Yeah. And as long as they're closer to the street, away from citizens and an accomplished task, uh, I think the reason they're limited to municipal and C2 is just because the single request, we don't want to open the door to lots of exemption. But that doesn't mean when somebody else comes in, whether it's a citizen or a business, right. and ask for the same thing that we will not entertain it. We'll actually put it and get a vote on it and move it forward just like with this. And this is one of those where we would recommend, we would recommend it, and then the council has to find to finalize, say yes or no on it. So there, yeah, there's still that's what Jason said, right? There still is an option in the C two zone right now to allow a thirty percent on the top of the roof, a thirty percent structure penthouse type thing to enclose, uh, you know, 
H band yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. So you can go 10 feet above the 48 feet, but it's limited to 30%. So it doesn't really help with the parapet part, but you could, like this, for example, with a, let's say this is in the middle of the building, you want to surround that. You could do a 10 foot wall around the top of that. You can see over here, there's some surrounding things like that. So that's still allowed in the C2 zone for anybody else who comes to State Street. To have that surrounding 10 feet above the 48 feet. This just allows the parapet for you know, a couple so of reasons. Whole, one is safety and one is. But the reason fundamentally is to give a higher seating to the city council. It really is, yeah. If for whatever reason the planning commission city yeah. council says no, then basically the alternative is to just lower the seating heights. Right, and you'll end up, you know, with a, a room that functions fine, it's just not as tall. Or excavate <laughs> down. <laughs> That's what uh, or excavate down. Yeah. And then you, and that costs yeah, they yeah, do, yeah, and you get to do uh, more expensive. But that, that's ADA my access ramps for wheelchairs, a higher, a higher bomb jump, right? But just, just so the main floor from floor to floor is 18 feet, mm -hmm. the second floor and third floor is 15 feet from floor to floor. So that 18 on floor one gives them three feet for mechanical, structural beams, and then finish seeing around 15. Right? That's the goal. Well, I had a question. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if we approve this, what does it mean going down the line? Does it does it make it easier or more legal for other people to come and ask for the same precedence? Is it going to cause a problem for the city of Oran if a municipality does this? Will it set a precedent that others will almost take advantage? They could ask. It's still up to the city council to make that modification. Right? Your recommendation still goes to the city council, and they're the ones that ultimately will say yes or no. But it doesn't prohibit. I mean, it doesn't set a precedent necessarily because it, it's only specific for municipal buildings. They could, though, say, "Well, you've done it here. I'm going to make an application to try to do it here." But the council is not obligated to change the ordinance. If I could add on to that, we kind of have a, a what would you call it, a pass already. We can build a municipal building in a residential zone right now. So we have that authority to be treated differently than anyone else. So it's not like we're we're setting something different than what we could do right now. We could go build a city hall in our A zone right now if we wanted to and not rezone it to a C2 or anything like that. So so the government does kind of get some, but you'd be bound by the 35 the zoning in that area, area right? The height. So that's why we have a senior center street in an R8 zone because it's a government building. So there are there are some kind of precedents that way. But you're right, where you're coming from is it's kind of do as I say, not as I do, right? Or, so well, and what would the media do with this? I mean Oren's been under a pretty big spotlight. Well there's there's options too for a rezone, for example. The rezone they just did on the canyon, the rezone to a PD zone. That's that doesn't set a precedent that other properties in the city will get a rezone to a PD zone. It's still a case by case. It still has the discretion of the city council. It still has the ability to say yes or no to legislative actions to come before them. There really is no precedent in my mind that they would have to. If they do this for the city center, there's no reason why they would have to do it for across for McDonald's across the street. It wouldn't be a set precedent in my opinion, which I'm not an attorney, but I don't think it would set a precedent. Yeah, they're legal to this. And they, they don't have any concerns for you to understand. But I mean, there are there are other options, but this is kind of the one that the council has given us the thumbs up to. Move and they've talked about doing a basement, but the cost is expensive as well, right? To lower it four feet. Yeah, to lower the whole building would be very expensive. When uh, will they embark on the construction of the? Um, right now, the plans are in full development. We just signed off on the design set, which means they take that and they start creating all the architectural drawings. We're hoping to break ground in April on uh, utility relocations, or actually in March. So we're only a couple months away. Who's the architectural firm that's? Uh, Method Studio. And they're, they, out of, they're out of um, Salt Lake, but uh, Joe Smith, one of the founders, he's from <coughs> graduate and lives down in the Grandview area. They did our fitness center, our library hall, and um, they did this project. I saw a really good track record. They did the new UVU business center and the pedestrian bridge across the freeway. They did the architectural design on that as well. So they've done some really good projects. Great.
All right, back. Um, we, uh, ORMC, received a letter of non compliance from the state regarding our amendment to adopt monitoring and housing strategies in November. Um, Were you surprised that you got that non compliant letter or not? I was a little surprised because we, yeah. we had been working closely with the state department on our language and um, but 66 other cities received these letters as well. Um, so we're not alone on an island there. Um, it's really partly due to staffing change. Yeah, so there was a few, you know, maybe changes that occurred at the, that department. Um, anyway, so we, we received four corrective actions. Um, I indicated this letter, and those um, are. Uh, these items, as, as you see here, um, the first one is um, there was it was their um, direction that we needed to correct some state code language identified in our strategies. Um, we needed to adopt a fifth strategy, um, and then we needed to correct implementation plans for um, two of our indicated strategies that we had adopted in October. And then um, along with the fifth strategy, we also had to formally adopt an implementation plan for that fifth strategy. Um, we were also, um, there's a 90 day compliance period, which is next month. Um, so we had a small window of time today and next Tuesday <coughs> to take this through um, uh, the process um, coming before you and then now your recommendation to the council. Um, uh, uh, these are the four, four strategies um, that we had identified and adopted in October, accessory apartments, affordable senior housing, uh, housing transmit and reinvestment zone, uh, stationary plans, and the fifth proposed strategy is um, related to impact fees um, for the affordable senior housing overlay. Um, just a quick review. Um, of that fifth strategy, um, uh, the, L, it's, the L is in state code language. It's, um, there's a list of alphabetical list of strategies we can choose. This is um, L, reduce, waive, or impact, eliminate impact fees related to moderate income housing. Um, and to go back a little bit uh, with the implementation plans required in state code for all cities, of a certain size, um, we all not only have to adopt these strategies, but we have to um, adopt a implementation plan that includes specific timelines and benchmarks uh, to make progress to um, try to create more affor uh, affordable and moderate income housing in our communities. Um, and so this is the proposed implementation plan for impact fees. Um, I won't read the whole thing verbatim, um, but that was one of the major deficiency uh, deficiencies that was identified with our existing implementation plans. They didn't, weren't, they didn't have enough benchmarks or specificity for implementation. Um, as this year, um, pending any changes in this legislative session, we will be required to report on what we've done with these strategies to create more housing in our community. Um, so that is gonna be coming this fall. We'll be reporting on that to the state. Um, so this is basically the kind of the, the proposed changes to the existing um, implementation plans language um, that we um, have been in co a coordination and contact with this uh, Division of Workforce Services who is the state agency responsible for this um, oversight? And um, they have kind of given us a thumbs up again on this language. So this has been presented to them. <coughs> this has been presented to them uh, as well as to the city council uh, for, for meeting the uh, correcting those deficiencies. Um, if we did not make any corrections, if we did not adopt a fifth strategy, 
we did not correct our implementation plans, we would lose out on some critical transportation dollars and eligibility for transportation dollars um, from UDOT and um, matching funds, uh, grants that are available to communities. And so but I have observed in the news recently that they're even getting more aggressive in their efforts to impose uh, additional moderate or low income housing in various communities. Yeah, because cities. we have a housing crisis yeah. and you know the cities can take certain steps to help. The market can't solve it all because we can't create housing. If but there's, a, like, there's a delicate dance. But they're it. toughen it up, it looks like. They're, they're all on board. Like yeah, that. I think so. I think that's what we're seeing. For, uh, is the, we're trying to uh, do things that we can do at the state and local level to try to work together to create more housing. Um, so this is just that corrected language. It's chapter four of the general plan. Um, the corrections that we're making is in red. And um, so we recommend plan commission for a positive recommendation. Um, any questions from any, any of the other commissioners on these amendments? Just what are the, what are the summarize kind of what are the big changes? Are they are they big or are they all minor kind of important? Basic, well, like I said, they they basically said we weren't committing to anything. Okay. So Orem City wasn't willing to commit to make any you know benchmarks or timelines, specific timelines on and actionable steps on some of these steps. So they they wanted us to go back and say. Hey, we gotta get we gotta get maybe a little more creative with with what we want to do. Um, uh, accessory apartments, for example, we can't require people to create an accessory apartment. That's you know everybody. It's property rights. Everybody can have one or not have one as as they deem fit for their property. So we can't predict pr 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 with one hundred percent accuracy how many more accessory apartments or units you have in the city. Um, but we can try to tough, uh, get more education about how to, if you have an illegal unit, how to bring it into compliance. Uh, we can work with the new neighbor enforcement team to try and just educate, educate, educate on um, how to you notice something that doesn't seem right, how to report an illegal unit, and what's the follow-up on that? What's so that's one of our major things with that is kind of creating an education campaign through the existing newsletters, through the library, um, to just help other people understand broad, more broadly, hey, how do I do it? What's, well, what, why would I want an accessory apartment? What's your requirements? If I want to create one, if I have an illegal one, if I suspect someone that is, is renting it out or even renting out a home illegally, right? Um, so that's the first major change to accessory apartments. Um, uh, senior housing overlay, we're suggesting, hey, it's been a while, maybe we could we look at um, as we are going to get micro level census data from 2020 census this year, finally, uh, due to delays with COVID, um, we can do a, a robust kind of examination of of what housing looks like neighborhood to neighborhood. And then we can kind of take that and say, hey, well, um, maybe looking at um, existing, the area existing zone, um, is there more area, is there areas where it's appropriate to have more overlay uh, expansion? Is there for senior housing, right? And potentially affordable senior housing. It requires to be income restricted. So, um, uh, and then similar to the other one, kind of just an education campaign with landlords. Um, um, I've talked to probably three or four developers in the last several months who are interested in, in developing some senior housing. And we've had to tell them, sorry, that's, I mean, you, know, you don't qualify because it's not in there, it's not an overlay zone or, what they want to do wouldn't be allowed. And so just exploring some future, you know, other additional ideas of how we maybe can try to target attainable housing for, for the seniors, for the elderly. How do you, how do you make enforce income restrictions? 
So they're required to submit a report every year and and, and show the income of the, the tenants in their in their buildings and their who they rent them to, the age of how old they are. So we do an annual report every year. And if they and if they are renting for somebody else, what's is it a fine or what? We haven't had to deal with that. At this point. Most of them are uh, all of them are or the Utah Housing Authority has bought some of the old fourplexes that can be converted. Yeah, yeah, that's their charge is to rent the seniors. I saw that last city council. So we have several in the city that actually yeah. were rented by them, and so they're already complying with all the requirements. So we have a couple of private ones that we require in these reports every year. And if not, we've had, I guess, the issue we have make them over time get back into compliance, rent to those that are the right age, and then rent. Is within that eighty percent. And what's the delineation between low income housing and moderate income housing? So um, the in state code, it's actually defined. Um, it's eighty percent of the area median income, which I don't know that number off the top of my head, um, but it's close to about fifty seven thousand, sixty thousand a year here in Orem. And that would be off of the area median for the MSA, which is called the statistical area, which is pro Um So that's defined in state code um, as that. Um, then low income is usually 50 or 30 percent um, of area median income. Um, so the modern income housing uh, legislation that went through last year's legislative session and that is that is all tied to what we're talking about today is requires cities of a certain size to to adopt a minimum of five strategies for us because we have a front runner station um, to try and help all cities try to offer more housing for, for everyone. So and, and what is the ratios in Orem of low income housing to moderate income housing? Um, I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. Um, I guess, just take a guess. So I, I wouldn't have a guess. Okay. And that's the related to what I shared about five minutes ago. Um, we have some numbers probably from 2018, but that's from, I would say, existing to a 2010 census data. And so because of the 2020 census, we've kind of had to wait because of COVID for um, new um, neighborhood level data to come out so we can do a citywide uh, refresh of the study of that kind of neighborhood to neighborhood. Uh, we do have some data from, you know, the one we went through the neighborhood plans. We, we have some neighborhood, I don't know that that was um, examined as far as the ratio. Um, as, as far as the city goes, those that are required to be low income housing, like this. The state or the county or the city has these regulations. It's it's pretty low as far as most of the apartments or rentals that are going to be more of market rate. So those that are forced by ordinance or whatever to do that moderate or low income, you're probably looking at five percent. We would be majority rate. moderate income housing in Orem, wouldn't we? Well, those that actually are renting would be by income, but it's not required for the landlord. Not by pay. Yeah, not okay. by not by the rent. But by the, right. the people that live there are probably qualified for that, but they're paying well, nice almost a market rate. Right. Right. Their studio. So the percentage of those that the actually mall. are paying Jeez, by you know <clears throat> moderate income right. rate is is pretty low. Yeah. Okay. Affordable. And some of that data, some of that data is difficult to obtain. We, um, you know, we do have a study where we we can know some numbers of how many you know renters and. and so we're really waiting for that micro level data to come out this spring uh, from the census to do it. And that's one of the things we've identified in this implementation plan, undergo a, uh, an update to an existing 2018 moderate housing study that was done to using that new data to really kind of get a set of new benchmark for ourselves and say, okay, this is where we're at, right? And then we can know where, where, where that, those adjustments can be made. So if I can just point out, I mean, this, those that are built under the standard, we have five. And that we have 20, over 26,000 housing units in Orem. We have five that are affordable senior housing. So, I mean, compare, compare, and then the county itself maybe has 15, well, maybe 20 or 30 units in a city that they, they control by rent and, you know, Section 8 housing type of thing. So it's pretty, it's pretty minor as far as what we have available in the city. 
Really good questions. Any other questions? I spent about four hours this morning going through the code, the city code, the state code, to try and understand what we're doing here. Okay. I have long advocated for accessory apartments. I don't think there's a better housing solution than that. 20 years ago, I tried to engage the city council in conversation on, on this. And uh, I wrote to all the city council and the mayor, and I got one answer. She said, no, basically. <laughs> I cannot support, I cannot vote yes on what is written up there. I have some real concerns. Okay, um, what are those concerns? I guess is what I might look forward to. One of the concerns is I don't think we ought to be trying to ask people to return to turn in their neighbors who they suspect of having illegal apartment. I cannot go along with that. Okay, um, I, I would say. Um, if they haven't gone through the process to create an illegal accessory apartment, then it's actually going against city ordinance. Pardon? It's going against city ordinance if they have an illegal accessory apartment. I can't do it wrong with asking people to turn it. Fine. Uh, two years ago, the state legislature, city, you know, statewide. There are better ways. Man, no, I'm saying st statewide, the state legislature passed a law two years ago mandating cities allow accessory apartments, yeah. but they still allow cities to monitor those and create their own regulations on how those, you know. So one of the one of the stronger, I would say one of the strongest um, difficult things with accessory apartments is if someone's renting it over capacity, then all of a sudden you have a parking issue on the streets, correct? I have a question. Does the yeah. language actually encourage people to turn in their neighbors? No, it was just that. Uh, That's what it says. It says yeah. we will create a campaign to educate people how to report illegal accessory apartments. It's essentially, it essentially the same. And that, that process is already in place for right now. So. understand the requirements of accessory apartments and how to help report illegal units. Yeah. Correct, and you could you can make a recommendation to not go with that language or modify or whatever you feel as a planning commission. And then the council can consider that recommendation. I think Jerry makes a really good point. I'm I not agree. sure that's what we want to do in Orem is to turn on each other. I think there should be a better way. We, so I appreciate you bringing that up. We did see that issue with the parked park vehicles and parked trailers. I think Where, there are ways to do it without. How would you? How would I you? Would Jerry, how would you? How would you do it? So, can you hear me over there, Jerry? No, I'm very thinking. Yeah, yeah, right. He's waiting. To, sorry, I'm yeah. waiting. <laughs> I think we're good. Try and encourage people to have access to the apartments. I think there might even be some some incentives to help them get. Yeah, maybe a campaign to tell them how to make one and you know open it up and those people who have illegal ones might come forward and say, already doing that. What do I need to do? It's kind of bothering me that it said there were 700 and some legal apartments and we expect maybe to be able to get another 26 additional accessory units. I think if we went about it right, we could get another 500 in the next year. So that 26 is an average of the last five years. So we get about 25 year. per year. Yeah, we had to come up with a benchmark. We, yeah. we, we answer questions every single day. Um, we answer <clears throat> questions every single day. People call the planning department and say, I want to create an accessory apartment in my house. Um, like I said before, we can't require them. We're not requiring anything. Um, this is purely the, the biggest change, all that red text there is because the state said our implementation plan for this strategy isn't good enough. So we had to come back and say, 
well, what can we try to tool up? What can we try to think up? This was uh, a suggestion that um, they gave us and say, hey, maybe we could create a campaign to try and help residents understand better requirements for how to do this, um, how to, you know, and we already have had that similar campaign with the neighborhood improvement team. They've gone through a process to help the residents understand how to report something that they are concerned about. Grant, Grant, if I could step in. Yeah. I, I think if you wanted to strike out and how to help report illegal units, I yeah. think you could make that recommendation. I, I think yes. we will. And I don't think the state would push back because we're still implementing a broad communication campaign yeah. to right. help understand the requirements. So we, we, we saw, we saw the, the backlash with the parking enforcement that we have right now where a lot of neighbors now call the neighbors by the trailer and it's been sitting there for four days instead of three. They're, they're still doing that as well. Yeah. But, but all of our legal assessor requirements are all reported by citizens. We don't go out and actively follow or but find assessor requirements. We, knew, we didn't have the issues till we encourage citizens to call the parking enforcement on the neighbor, we're now encouraging citizens to call the city on their neighbors. So is that through a Facebook thing? I don't know. Sure, yeah, no, it's not, not through a Facebook thing. thing. So uh, Jen, Jen um, he's a volunteer with the police department, one of the VIPs, he's been just receiving lots of phone calls from citizens. Okay. Now that the citizens know it's an option that we actually have a parking enforcement that can go deep into neighborhoods and start ticketing and towing other people's vehicle that have been sitting there for more than three days. Now that the citizen know, this has been a, a, an influx of fights mm -hmm. over the issue. And I think striking the language would be good to encourage citizens to snitch, essentially, yeah. to go away. Yeah. And I think that, that that would be good to take it out. <clears throat> but if, if I remember right, Grant, you talked to us about the different implementations and needing to have five of them a few months ago. And he said we have 27 to choose from. Mm -hmm. that we have to present to the city and you walked us through it and you picked the the five that made the most sense for us as a city and we walk, we'll walk through with them it was, it well was we walked through those but then we also got direction from the council which ones that they were comfortable most comfortable with as well so Perfect. so the four were already adopted by the yes. council we're just simply modifying those four yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're adding the one because that seems to be the easiest and lowest hanging fruit that we can say, hey, let's look at implementing some reduction in fees, impact fees for senior housing. But that's basically what we're doing. Yeah. So we're adding, we're not doing anything with the four. We already selected those. That's already yes. been adopted. We're just yes. modifying those. We're adding the one. So what, what are our fees now for accessory apartments? Because I was looking at a property. That there's no there's no impact fees for accessory apartments. Not anymore. There's no application, but there's a there's a day. Well, no, $50 have... license. How much are the application fees? It depends on what you're doing. If you have an unfinished basement, you're doing everything from scratch. It's going to be more than somebody who has an already finished basement. They're just converting it to every case is different. So yeah. Yeah. Where are we still charging the, like the yearly $50 fee? Right. Yeah, they're Perfect. still a lot more. But your sewage and everything is already considered for that apartment, that house as it exists. So if you just have the, unless you're adding on, right? There should right. be no impact. So, the, so the, it wasn't so already So there sense. are no impact fees. Right. Both no impact impact fees. Impact fees are so the building permits are going to be pretty minor as far as. Yeah. You're not looking at five thousand dollars. You're there's looking, you know thousand or less. Yeah. I think the average is like between 100 and 800. And that's your okay, that's great. So, and your if it's yeah, because it requires a lot more work. Depends on where you there's are. a lot of different there's no interconnection now required. I mean, there's the only thing that really we require is an extra parking stop. Right? Yes. So I mean it has to be within the building itself, the house. You can add on as long as it's part of the main dwelling. But there's a lot of different things that the state has required us that we modified the word in sense. To allow it to be a lot easier. There's no second furnace. There's no interchange of air. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be combined that makes it a lot cheaper for a homeowner to come in and do it. And so all these changes, to your point, we've we've done the states made that change. We've made that change over time. So it's and except for this is going to allow us now to maybe advertise it a little bit more. But that's kind of the direction we've made it a lot simpler for homeowners to come in and say, hey, I want to do that instead of giving them a sticker shock of. Well, you got to add a furnace, you got to add a water heater, you got to do a you know firewall and all this stuff. And you're looking at twenty, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Now you're looking at a minimum of. I'm just going to get a permit to make sure I have some, you know, a second kitchen or whatever, and that's pretty much the extent of what you have to do now. So, I, I, I passed on that house because the fees were insane. By right? then, second furnace and that firewall, and then a few yeah, months all, later, all that got canceled. Got canceled. Yeah. There was all that aside, eliminated so, by by state code. So. That's and our ordinance is now updated as well. 
Awesome. So, Jerry, let me go on record. So, I, I yes, uh, five and six houses down from me, from where I bought a house seven years ago. Um, we have three homes that have 22 cars that are parked around them. Two on one side of the street, one on the other side of the street. One of the homes was illegally rented when I moved into the neighborhood, and the other two have since converted it to legal rentals. And um, uh, without neighborhood, um, and, and these are not senior houses, they're not accessory apartments, these are legal apartments, but without neighbors reporting them, um, what or what as neighbors, what are we to do? What's our what's our recourse? Nothing. These people are these people are disobeying the law. So we just say if, if we don't say anything when people disobey the law, then we're actually condoning their behavior. So so you're saying we should condone illegal behavior. So I'm just I'm not I'm not I'm not understanding where you're at. I I we you and I may have difference of perspective around whether we should whether people should whether the law is legal or not. But in terms of reporting, so you're saying, well, because you disagree with the law, you don't want to report it. I say, well, I agree with the law, I want to report it. I think there are things that are a lot higher priority than reporting illegal apartments. I think if we could stress obeying the law down State Street as far as uh, speed limit is concerned, it would save a lot of lives, a lot more than what. You just changed the argument. I have an answer to my question. Let me, can I jump in for just a second? <laughs> I'm keep in mind we've got five minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, I just want to wrap this in one second. Oh, you got uh, three, three minutes. minutes. Three minutes. Uh, five, three, four minutes. <laughs> well, uh, similarly to Mary's situation, we had next door to us a home that was sold and uh, a fellow moved in that was in the process of a divorce, and uh, he ended up just making that into a, an apartment complex for a number of people. And uh, I'm his next door neighbor. I, I want to be friends with him, but what he's doing, he knows is not right. I didn't turn him in, okay? But someone else did <laughs> that had uh, children. We, we live at the end of a cul-de-sac, and so these. Uh, these renters came in and they would, they were young fellows, all of them young fellows, and they'd speed and there were lots of them and they, they had their guests and they had their Federal Express drop-offs and so on. And uh, it was just an awkward situation. I think if I'm reading you correctly, you don't want to have a speed of Gestapo. Uh, you don't want to encourage people to do it, to report their neighbors, but certainly someone should be able to Go to someone and say this isn't right. I know. I'm having no problem, but if we have a neighbor who's causing a problem, report them. Yeah. And his issue is encouraging people to do it. Yeah, it's not actually doing it. No, I told you. Doing is fine. Everybody don't want to be like that. No, I think we all, I think we agree with you in that exactly. regard. So yeah. The issue is encouraging people to not do it. Doing is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, but, but people in my neighborhood that were, we discussed it, others, what do we do? And can we go to the city? And someone did. Yeah. So my next door neighbor told me this last week that he sold, he bought a new house, and he was going to rent out the house. I'm saying that publicly in this meeting, too. <laughs> so, how so many times is he going to rent out the, the problem, house? The problem with that is he's not happy with his neighbors. That's why we're That's my fault. It's the biggest in November we do it in Murray, are you opposed to striking that language in this it's report? Arrest, it's a recipe council. I, I'm, I'm fine. I'll do whatever whatever we agree to do. Yeah. I prefer it not be striking. It doesn't okay. matter. No, I, I, think, I think Ryan's just to understand what of. your preference was on that. My yeah, is that not, thing not, it's not strike, it, but no, I don't think that's not strike. No, no, no. Educate how to come to the committee. He's pretty perceptive. I don't know. It starts with educating. I don't see it the same way. Some of that some of the language, some of the like proposed language did come from Kenna, who runs the neighborhood improvement team. And so I did coordinate with her on the uh, the aspect that she, her team and the people she works with who would be we would be working together with on that specific strategy element. 
um, that she was comfortable with the language as well. So I, I'd have to go with it. I mean, I'm not going to mince you know, words here. If you guys make a recommendation, that's your recommendation. But just to let you know that this wasn't like, this isn't all my language. This is very collaborative and multi part, multi people reviewed this process. And, and city council has seen this. And the city council has seen this language. And this, and we'll see it again on, on Tuesday. We'll see it again on right, Tuesday. Right, but then you, you've already vetted it through them before showing it. Well, Jerry's the kind of neighbor I want to have. If he's not <laughs> kind of thoughtful. Is there a house for sale next to your place now? <laughs> your neighbors won't move. You stay right by. It's a great ROI. <laughs> <laughs> Testing. not working. Grant, why is it not working? It was it was cool. Okay. <laughs> what? No, here. Yeah, no, you don't have to go up there. No. All right, it's.
right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Cheryl. And thanks for everybody's help today. We have two new members, and Helena and uh, and Mike. So we appreciate your time of volunteering with us and spending uh, some time to understand how this works. Please feel free to contact anyone if with any questions. Um, we'll start with uh, well, we have full quorum and we're ready to go. But we'll start with the invocation, Mike. And you press this button. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to meet here and do the business of this great, wonderful city. We ask that I lend thy spirit with us, that we might make the needful choices that will benefit all of the residents within the boundaries of the city and do what is right. We thank you for the time and uh, the camaraderie that we offer one another. And we say these things humbly in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. After a long break, I expected the, the agenda to be a lot longer, but this is it's good. Go ahead, Cheryl. All right. So item 3.1 is Majestic Heights, Plat C. They're located at 437 South, 800 East in the R8 zone. This shows where they're located. So it's um, currently there, there are two lots that are lots of record and they will now be platted. And basically what they're doing is cleaning up uh, nuisance strips and their property lines. They're cleaning up the property lines. They're taking their current property line back to the um, properties to the east, which are already platted. And so no, no change to those two properties will happen. It's just the properties to the west lots one and two. This will clear up the nuisance strips and make it one large lot instead of three individual lots or two individual lots, depending on which that's lot one or two. Um, this is what it looks like from the street. And staff recommends approval to clean up these property lines for these two lots. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, anybody, any questions for more? Okay. I'll, I'll make the motion. Uh, the Planning Commission approved the preliminary and final plat for Majestic Heights. Plat C located generally at 437 South, 800 East in the R8 zone. I'll second it. Great. Jim? Aye. Emma? Aye. 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 Thanks, Cheryl. All right. Item 3.2 is lots, lots. Plat A amended, and it's dealing with lot 19 of lots, lots subdivision. They're taking one large lot and creating two lots. We'll have the lot in front with the existing home and then a flag lot in the back. Um, the home will remain. It has an existing carport that will be removed to give access easement to the rear property line, I mean, to the rear property. This is a demolition plan showing that removal of the carport. And there's a couple of structures in front of it, like a cellar door and that kind of thing. This is what the site plan looks like, showing the proposed drive access to lot two. And this is a proposed plat showing the two property lines, I mean properties. Both lots meet the minimum size requirements for R8. The front lot will be has to be a minimum of 8,000 square feet, and the rear lot has to be 125% of that, which is 10,000 square feet. And that cannot include the stem for the driveway. So both lots meet that minimum requirement. And this shows what it looks like from the street. And that is the carport that will be removed for the drive access to the lot in the back. And staff recommends approval. Do you have any questions for me on this one? meets requirements and um, mm -hmm. we don't have any questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I make a motion that the Planning Commission approve the amended lot 19 of lots, lot subdivision, plat A and approve lots, lots subdivision, plat A amended, located generally at 1895 North, 800 West in the R8 zone. I said, mm -hmm. aye. 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 Go ahead. Okay, item 3.3 .3 
is amending portions of the, the code <laughs> section 2288A regarding heights of um, walls and buildings in the C2 zone. This will modify that for municipal buildings. Um, this shows where the code will change. It will add, well, currently the current height in C2 zone is 48 feet. This would add for municipal buildings, the option to have an additional four feet of parapet. So the roof itself will still be 48 feet, but the parapet will rise four feet above that roof. Um, this shows you examples of what a parapet is. It's a safety thing for people on the roof and it also hides all the ugly HVAC. I know if you're an HVAC person, they're beautiful, but most people don't wanna see the mechanical things on the roof. Um, we recommend forwarding a positive recommendation to the city council. And do you have any questions for me on this one? Question I would have that I've thought about is the uh, notion that it's four feet high. Is there a recommended safety height for a parapet? Do we know that? Is four feet a, a good height? Four feet is a good height. I don't know if there's a recommendation as far as yeah. pulling Architectural it off. There's, there's different sizes of parapets, just depending on fire codes and different things like yeah, that. Yeah, how thick they are and so on. Yeah. Are parapets required at all for any building or they're not required? Uh, not for every building, no. I mean, if it's on a property line, they are required by building code. And this one is more required for safety purposes so people don't are working on the roof, uh, fall off. That's one of them. The other one is also screening. So there's multiple purposes for parapets, but majority of the, I think on this building is more of a safety feature. Yeah, it's not so much required as requested, I'm guessing. Is that right. correct? Too? Right, yeah. yep. Makes so sense. the city can still build the 48 feet in the same way without a parapet if you wanted to. They could. Yeah. Yeah. Is there another option other than a parapet? Not have one. That's I mean, that's the other option. Yeah. I, if I could add, a parapet also gives you a location to bring your roof membrane up mm -hmm. and it buttons on the top of the parapet and then they usually put a metal flashing over it. So it really helps with that. For example, out here on Library Hall, the lower roof only has about a one foot parapet. Um, when you get up on the upper areas, it's a little bit taller towards the existing library. Um, for our facilities team that gets on our roofs, um, I really prefer the taller parapet for safety, but you, you could be shorter. You could not have one, but architecturally, it's a little more pleasing to have that parapet. As you drive around town, you'll notice some on most of your flat roof buildings. That way you're not seeing that membrane kind of blending into the edge of the building. It's more for safety in our, in our company. We, looks, when we go work on roofs that doesn't, don't have parapets, we actually bring our own by four feet to make sure our guys are safe. Does that makes sense. That, that's true. You build a safety harness. Yeah, we build a safety uh, fence, fence around to right? finish the job. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, um, what other potential future buildings could this apply to? Are there any buildings in a long range plan the next 20 or 30 or 40 years where you'd say that we would build something that tall? Are, are we doing this just for the existing city hall or could there some, be something down the road as well? This, this would be strictly for municipal buildings. So I don't know of anything in the works right now for another city hall, right? This, this building is what, 55 years old, 60 years old. So I don't expect we'll be building another municipal building. But there could be some ancillary building that probably is not going to be 48 feet tall, right? I mean, it could be another senior center. It could be redone, of, you know, in the next 20 years or something, but it's not going to be 48 feet, I don't believe. But, I mean, that does open the option for any municipal building in a C2 zone to have the same standard. Okay. To answer your question, Murray, our, our next build is likely a rebuild of Fire Station 1. Um, and then after that, most of our buildings are all pretty much... Um, newer or within 20 years or so. Great. Well, if there's no other questions from the commission, do you have another question, Jim? No. Well, okay. great. This is a public hearing, so we'll open this to public comments and questions. If, if you do have any common questions, just come and state your name and ask your question. No questions, so we close the public hearing section and we can move forward to the recommendation. Um, you want to make yeah, I'll move. I move we forward a positive recommendation of the City Council amending Section 228-8A General Development Standards pertaining to parapet wall heights in the C2 zone for municipal buildings only. 
I second that motion. Okay. Jim? Yes, aye. Nay. Aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. Aye. Okay. Hello again. Um, I have 3.4 public hearing amending portions of chapter four, housing of the Orem general plan, including updating section 4.4.2 pertaining to moderate income housing strategies. Uh, in November of 2022, following our previous uh, uh, adoption of four strategies, um, the city received a letter of non-compliance uh, with four corrective actions regarding our moderate income housing strategies. Um, these are the four um, corrective actions and, and the fifth item is the 90 day compliance period for us to um, correct the uh, actions identified. Uh, so the first item, uh, first corrective action was to correct state code language. Um, second was to adopt a fifth strategy the third was to correct implementation plans for two of the previous um, adopted strategies. And then the fourth corrective action was to adopt an implementation plan for the fifth strategy. Um, to clarify, uh, the implementation plans were, were not specific enough and did not have um, the required timelines or benchmarks um, per state code um, for them to qualify. And so that was identified in the corrective, um, the corrective language of the letter. Um, and then the, the 90 day compliance period ends uh, February 16th. And so we're coming before you tonight and then the city council next Tuesday to um, get these corrective actions amended. And then we will resubmit to the state with um, the final language. Um, to refresh, these are the five strategies that we um, have previously adopted for the first four as uh, strategies per um, the state code, as well as the fifth strategy we're proposing uh, for impact fees for the affordable senior housing overlay zone. Um, and so since we reviewed the previous um, strategies before, I have just the language of the fifth strategy here, which is um, L from the state um, language, L reduce, waive, or eliminate impact fees related to moderate income housing. And um, this is our proposed implementation plan. Um, this is kind of in conjunction with um, an overall um, housing study that we'll be conducting this in next year. Um, and then um, pre proposed um, full draft text language before you showing the, the amendments to the implementation plan for accessory apartments um, and the um, affordable senior housing overlay. So um, staff recommends planning commission for a positive recommendation to the city council. Any questions for me? Okay, so to clarify a few things, we, we normally cover those items in the pre-meeting. And that's why in some of those instances we move, we move a little faster, like items that are not controversial or don't require public hearing. Uh, on this one, Jerry had a, a concern that we want to address. You want to go ahead with it, Jerry? You want to go ahead and express your um, opinion about the language here? Well, having spent several hours today trying to understand where we are on this, um, I think it's an important enough issue that we need to do it right. And I don't think we've done it right in the first place. You're asking us to approve something that we just saw. And you're telling us it has to be approved today. 
And that kind of offends me a little, that you're asking us to just blindly approve it. And there are things in what you've written up that I cannot agree with. Is there a reason? Right, I, 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 to answer that, I, I, as I indicated at um, the end of the pre-meeting, this isn't um, text just drafted up by one person. This is text collaborated by with many, and not just from city staff. But we've already collaborated with this on the state, at the state level as well, on on some language that we could propose for this specific strategy that you're identifying. Um, as we discussed in the pre-meeting, is there any other um, portions of the other language that you're concerned with, or is it just the accessory department? Is there a reason this couldn't be postponed to the next meeting? It could not be. We have one. We have one window of time. Um, to bring this before Planning Commission and City Council to get the amendments voted on before that 90 day period ends. If we're not, if we do not meet that 90 day period, then we will suffer the, some consequences that are in state law from the, for not meeting that deadline. If I could jump in, um, yes, you can continue it but there are uh, pushbacks and situations that we'll face. One of those is we don't qualify for transportation funding and we're not quite sure what the state will do if we're not done in time. But regardless of the vote here, it will go to the city council with a positive or negative recommendation. And then they would make that decision if they wanted to not go forward. So if that makes sense. So, so we have the option of actually forward a negative recommendation rather than a positive re recommendation. Uh, absolutely. The question I would ask is, Jerry, in addition to the item, you've spent a lot of time studying this to your credit, but in, in, in doing that, you identified this one item. As I have read through it, I have a lot of questions. Are they uh, such that we can discuss them now? Are they? They're not questions that can be answered in five minutes. Okay. No. Well, we, we, we don't have to do it in five minutes. We have time. Pardon? We have time. Yeah, you don't need to do it in five minutes. But can I say something before we get into it? The problem is it's not the city that's requiring us to do this in total. This is a state box that we're being put in because our state legislatures have decided that cities in general are not doing certain things and they want to incentivize us to do certain things by providing consequences if we don't and so they're using their power yeah, but i mean yes it's not there's incentivizing the, it's, it's penalizing it's penalizing i was trying to be nice but yeah, okay you have to be nice. no i don't have to be nice you're right i don't you know oh, and you this is the abuse word. well this but this <laughs> is what's coming before us again in this upcoming legislature session yeah. a lot of what you disagree with is stuff you need to be talking to all of the reps in Orem and all of the senators in Orem, because this is a large key of what's happening. It's, I don't think it's that we don't wanna create moderate income housing. I don't think we necessarily like the process that's being forced upon us, but you can also argue that we only have power to do some of this because the state has given us that power. So we're stuck in a situation where in order to comply with state statute, we have to do certain things. And I, I, I would say from the process we went through before and the process now, we're trying to find the way that we can do that quickly and with the least impact on what we're doing right now. Because no, I would say, honestly, it's unfair that the state hasn't given us sufficient time. I mean, as we went through last year, they said the law was in place by July, but they didn't have information to us until later in the year. So we had to rush it through then as well. And now which is really common, we're giving three months to respond back to them during the Christmas holiday when nobody's meeting and nobody's doing anything. I honestly think that that's, they should have given at least another month to people, but I understand they're trying to get their numbers in because we're trying to get through another legislative session. So there's a lot about this that is not what we would want or what we would like, but because of certain legal boxes the state has put us in, we have to go through this. 
Now, I agree with you. I think there are some things in some of the language that's not specific to state statute, which is one of the things that some of these changes are, are to make it the same as state statute. There are some of that language like in the implement excuse me, an implementation that I think, yeah, I think we could have a real discussion about, do we want it to say and how to help report illegal units? That's totally a fair discussion. That's something that we actually could make a recommendation about that's not gonna invalidate us because they have purposely tied the road money to this because they know, I mean, I mean how many millions of dollars are we looking at? We're looking at a huge you know amount you know what the consequence would be financially? Um, I don't know that overall number, but two of the biggest projects in Orem is the Geneva Road widening and the 16th North widening. And I'm, I don't want to use fear tactics because I'm not entirely sure, but we've, from what we understand, that those projects would be affected. Okay. So we obviously do as we, as recommended or... Or else. or else, you pay the price. Or else, I mean, this is really what it is. It's a forceful abuse, but, but not as like it's it's abuse. It's 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 <laughs> well, forceful. it's still, still and, and uh, Grant, Grant, just just to clarify, just but, but just a reminder: the state gives local governments their power, and therefore they can take it away. They're the ones that allow us to exist. So okay, they they do rule us with an iron fist when needed. Well, okay, but, but to clarify one thing: for subjects and servants. Not not to independent people. I, um, I'm not implying that. I'm just implying that, that that statement is exactly what that means. I'm just <laughs> implying that the that, state gives local governments the power to exist under the state yeah. constitution. I, I would I would just want to request something. If you do want to speak, there's a little button in there if you want to push it. So and it would show my monitor who wants oh, to right speak. There. Otherwise, it could be, get a little messy. But yeah, yeah I, I grant. Oh uh, yes, I'm on. I'm just I'm working no, through. Uh, just want to point out to you um, that I know we know that it wasn't you. I just wanted to come across yeah, yeah, yeah. as as personal, and I know that when we were talking in there about it, it kind of felt like you, you felt like attacked about the whole reporting thing. But we understand that it wasn't you necessarily put the language in there. We're just trying to find the best way to handle uh, last second request. I understand or the our city that we care about loses a lot of money so I, that's, I, the other reason i brought that up at the end was was i, I just wanted to clarify button, right? that, <laughs> that kenna our neighborhood services manager who's over the neighborhood improvement team did make some specific recommendations with regards to um, actions and their goals for improving the neighborhoods improving the city and their roles in doing that and so um i can't word by word, sentence by sentence, identify which, what she recommended, but a large part of the elements that we were including her area of focus and her team and the neighborhood improvement team's role in that um, did, were suggested or recommended or are brainstormed with them. And so that um, um, another aspect was, I mean, when we came down to it, some of these strategies are difficult to come up with specific timelines or benchmarks for as identified by state code. And so we had to get really creative in terms of how we and what we proposed to the state to meet that requirement um, as at the staff level. And so uh, we've, we've tried to draft something up here that um, at, as a staff, and then we've presented it to the council um, that we feel, you know, gets us to that benchmark of meeting these requirements. Okay. So, Jason, you had something to say, and then Helena. So, it is a state legislative, or no, I just forgot what I was going to say. State enabling legislation that the states pass on to the cities to allow them to regulate their own. So, it is passed on through the state. Um, I think it's. I think we'd be safe to say that if we struck out and how the, to help report illegal units and just put the Senate or period after apartments, I think we'd be. That's, that's acceptable to us. I don't think that's an issue as far as something that the state would say. Well, yeah, we're not going to be able to do that now. I think that sentence can be part of that sentence can just be eliminated. Okay. And I think we'd be fine with that with a recommendation. Obviously, it's in here. That's already been advertised. A recommendation that we eliminate that portion. I think would be fine. Okay. 
Alan? Was there other elements or concerns? We're still we're still talking about. Yeah, yeah. saying we'll try to find out. Um, that's that's what I would like. I would like to scratch those seven words that we discussed over in the other session. But for the last thirty minutes, I would actually like to hear what Jerry has to say. Um, I think we have 30 minutes. If we can turn this into a better document through discussion, I say let's put the 30 minutes into hearing what Jerry observed. Jerry, do you want to discuss your concerns? I can't vote yay on it with it the way it is. We understand but that. It, but it can go forward with one nay, right? Yes, but we, we want to know what else do you have? What, what other concerns do you have about it? They are many. You can start with one. Yeah, go. Yeah, give us, okay. give us one. Share one with us and we'll, we'll pull the string. Not at this point. There's, there's no time to rewrite it, so... Well, at this point, we can't rewrite it, but we can make recommendations to the city council and they can choose if they accept our recommendations to make changes to the document. I think it'd be worthwhile to have your concerns on the record so that the council and the mayor can see it. They, they do receive minutes of the meeting and, and do pay attention to what your thoughts are. So I would encourage you as well to share that. I'm questioning the whole process more than the particular document. I'm questioning especially the accessory apartments have been mishandled, in my opinion, for the last 25 years. And I have dealt with it for 25 years. Hello. And as I said in, in our other meeting, I don't think there's a better solution for increasing housing than accessory apartments. It's a lot cheaper than building great big buildings that will become slums in the next 25 years because you have an owner living in the building, taking care of it. So, so Jerry, would you recommend the first, the first areas uh, around accessory apartments, would you recommend we beef up and make, make that recommendation stronger to, to encourage and promote more accessory apartments? I, have, uh, and, and I would very much recommend making the recommendation that we do everything we can to encourage accessory apartments and that we don't encourage people to turn in their neighbors that they suspect of having an illegal accessory apartment. In my particular neighborhood, I am pretty certain that I could find 25 illegally apart illegal apartments. They aren't causing any problems. There are fine people living in them, and I'm not going to go looking for them. Well, then let's take the language out about reporting. If, if there are problems, then yeah, report them. But to encourage, and that's the wording you put in here, help residents understand the requirements of accessory apartments and how to help report illegal units. Jerry, can I ask you a question real quick? Would you be interested in having a greater discussion about accessory apartments in Orm with the city council, as opposed to what's being stated here? Because this is basically a regulatory statutory thing that we kind of just have to get down on paper so we don't lose access to funds. But what I'm hearing from you is what you'd really like to hear is a greater discussion about apartments in accessory apartments in Orem and how they could be better created, enforced, 
without people getting into it, but like getting them legal or whatever, whatever it is that you want. Is that what you would be more interested in is having a full conversation yeah. with them sometime? Uh, I think that hey, some, I could also, I think we could also modify the language to say, um, you know, implement a broad communications campaign to help residents understand the benefits and requirements of accessory apartments. That'd be good. So like you were saying, you know, it's great. You know, it's, it's a, a more great, positive it's language. a great option for people to have. Um, I think we could modify that we could strike out that report element and we could, we could add in something else to, you know, like you were saying to encourage awareness and people's um, awareness of and, um, you know, pursuit of, of getting an accessory permit. So I think that's, some, I think that's some other language we could propose. I think if you just end it with a period that basically, basically says to help understand what accessory well, permits. You want, so. you don't, you don't, you don't just want them to understand the requirements. You want them to adopt it. So you need to understand the benefits and, and really, um, have a desire to, to, to create an accessory apartment if it's at all feasible. I think that's well, what Jerry's suggesting. Right. I mean, but if I might, Mr. Chairman, may say something. I mean, individuals have the opportunity to, to do it or not do it. Yeah. Right. I mean, personally, I live in Orem. I have a home. I'm not going to do it in an accessory apartment because my wife and I don't want one. I don't need the city to tell me how to do it, yeah, but there are right. some people that need to know how to do it and want to know how to do it. And that's what we're proposing is to have better education on how to create an accessory apartment so it's available. We get a lot of call, 311 gets a lot of calls. We get a lot of calls on how do I create an accessory apartment? If we just have a document or something that helps them or a link we, or something like that's what we're proposing we here should, is just yeah. to help them how to walk themselves through getting an accessory apartment. That's what we're saying. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it makes sense that we would encourage people to do it necessarily. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. Just let it be. This is how you do it if you want to do it. With and the housing prices the way they are right now, it helps a lot of first time home buyers or to afford the house by adding an accessory apartment, right. getting right. some of the rent. So it, I guess, educating them, and maybe take the word encourage. And we do, we do that now, right? But, There's no language based on this. We're just implementing the fact that we're now we're going to propose something, but we do that every day. Yes, People yeah. call us and we do this every day. Well, so it's not like we're something that we're going to do differently. We may send out flyers. We may do more Facebook posts. We may do things like that. Yeah, but we continue to do it on a daily basis. Oh, I know you do. I called you when I needed help with that. Yeah, and it was very helpful from the first call. Yeah. And just one more thing. I think, like I said, and I kind of went through it really quickly in the pre-meeting. Um, whatever we have in these implementation plans, we'll be reporting on this coming October. And so I think that's an element of this that I said wasn't. We weren't. We didn't have a specific benchmark or goal or timeline for this strategy before. And so they, that's why we're bringing forth, hey, Orem's going to do this campaign. And then we can say, hey, we got this kind of out. We had this many people we reached out to through the newsletter. You know, this is how many, this is how they reach, like to Jason's point, we're going to create some documentation for that people can review, um, try to be more thorough in and this. So that's something then this October, when we comes time for us to report on how we did, we can come back and say, we did this. So I think striking that language to, to that portion would totally be fine. To, to uh, how, how would you have it read now then? Just Jason, Jason and Ryan Jason, proposed can you uh, restate how uh, you would? Jim, I've been she's scribbling working on it down. It. She's working on it. Sorry, this is, so based on the conversation, do we want benefits to be included in it or not? The benefits and requirements? No, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, I, I, it's just, um, if they want to do it, fine. But to sell people on it, I don't think that's our purpose. Okay. That's my opinion. Okay, because okay. that was one of the things that was just proposed. So really right now, all we're talking about is striking the last seven words. So Correct. you just, the sentence would end with, implement a broad communication campaign citywide to help residents understand the requirements of the accessory apartments. Yep. Okay. That's great. Okay. Were there other portions? The were there other hearing. portions that we wanted to amend? Yeah. Or, I haven't opened it yet. Was there any other portions that were 
we needed to modify. Well, you 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 said a, a really great paragraph. I wish I can recite it the way you said it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what was that? Was about improving or encouraging? It, it was the benefit portion. The benefit portion. That Madeline mentioned. Okay. I great. don't have my mic on. Benefits is I what he said. You. Yes. Okay. Well, let's open this to the public. It's a public hearing. I. So it's open to the public. If anybody has any questions, it's obviously not a controversial issue to the public, but, uh, and we'll close it, close the public hearing. And now uh, any other questions before we move forward with the new language? And we do understand we're under pressure. So we'll, we'll move on with, with this item. I did have a question. Yes. Is there anything in two and three that we are discussing or no. nothing? So the this implementation plans for um, how the three and four were not found to be deficient. They were they had they so we only had to address the first two uh, implementation plans. And for your clarification, we have to have those because we have transit stops within our just in case. Sorry, I'm not trying to. <laughs> Just for clarification. On no, that, that was a really good question. So yeah, yeah, we didn't address the three and four strategies because they weren't like called out as being deficient, um, and, and from the state's pers uh, from the state's evaluation, and so that's why we brought had to go back and kind of rework this implementation plan and the text proposed draft implementation plan for the affordable senior housing overlay. Okay. Uh, my question would be for item five, for the one we're adding, do we need a more concrete action plan that shows dates and so you've got that, you've got, okay. As, got as you see it, okay. as we've submitted to the state. Um, yeah, they, I see it there. <laughs> they've, they've evaluated all of our proposed texts that you see before you tonight and um, have given us, uh, looks good so far. Um, so, um, obviously, understanding that if you or the city council has any you know, modifications that they would again, we would take those again to them um, and double check if there's any substantial changes. But, but they've seen, yeah, the state has reviewed this and uh, given us a thumbs up. Thanks, Grant. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I had one further question, but it's not sure. with this. Uh, it's with the expansion of Geneva Road. Who actually wants that expanded? Is Orem initiating that? Well, where is it coming from? Well, I think that could be a question after the to Jason and and uh, Sam after the uh, Sam after the uh, after we finish with this item. Well, I was just yeah. wondering. It, it depends on our vote, yay or nay, as to how valuable that money is to the people of Orem. That's all. I had a similar thought. I thought, you know, if we really didn't want any additional funding from the state for these roads, we could be really sneaky, right? And say, no, we're going to turn it down because we want the state to butt out of giving us funding. Now, um, I assume the state also gives us funding to do other things besides just build new roads. Is that correct? Or am I incorrect in assuming that? And maybe, yeah. yeah, that there are opportunities for grants, state grants that we apply for. Um, trail grants, uh, neighborhood grants, uh, all kinds of grants that different city organizations apply for. I you caught me where I can't think of anything specifically, but there are other grants out there and other state programs we utilize. That's a great question, Helena. I mean, I guess, for example, as well, right now, the state is looking to complete some sidewalk on, on 800 North. So that is some of those transportation impact fund some of that active transportation fees that we are eligible for simple little little projects like that where they've done work on trails and things like that so it's i mean and it, and it could be large components of, of funding for i-15 it kind of runs the whole gamut so you're looking at uh funds that are used to expand intersections where there's a lot of um congestion like ryan spoke to there's trails there's active transportation there's all kinds of things that it's for it's not just necessarily roads I think for me, I'm trying to figure out what is our purpose? Because if the state is gonna get everything the state wants, then why are we here? 
if all we can do is scratch seven words to try and improve it for our city. So I'm just trying to figure out our relationship to the state and if we really do have any authority or if we're just yes, men and women. Well, I, I, I think this, your, your, the, your question is a good one. And, and the, you know, the thing that goes through the back of my mind, being really honest is, you know, are we jumping through hoops because the state is telling us to jump through hoops? Or do we really want more um, medium income housing for seniors? I think the answer is yes, we do. And I think the state is legislating things to try and help us to make things happen. I'm not sure it's gonna make any difference. So, the so- really, The state really tells us, in my opinion, you can call your own shots, but your shots better be consistent with what our shots are. Yeah. That, and that's basically how it is. And if we need to push back, then we push back through our senator and our representative. But we, we also need to know the impact of the consequences before even moving forward with those thoughts, because I don't think we have enough time to figure out all the consequences with saying nay to it. And even if we don't forward a positive recommendation, or even if we forward a negative recommendation, the council still supersedes us. And the yeah. thing, so we have a, yeah. we can forward it however we want. And I think strong killing language is important. Keep in the existing language for the uh, council without those seven words so they can see the difference. And then the council will, will definitely, and then, then we'll reach to reach the councilman, you know, I'll definitely reach to myself and, and ask him more. They definitely, they would know more. They would know more about the impact and the negative consequences. And, um, but we, we also want to think of what Jerry thought about 20 years ago and didn't get, and now we're suffering from it. He, he wanted accessory apartments 20 years ago, and we don't have them now. And look where we're at as far as, and nobody could anticipate this. So is, is rejecting the state funding the right thing to do now, but not in 20 years? We're accepting it now. So it's, those are it's a huge topics that I don't think we have the bandwidth to cover right at the moment. Good, good questions though, great yeah. topics. Is if, I mean, if we can do without any of the state fees and not be under the, their control, sure. But could we now, and if we could now, how about in 20 years, would we face the same exact issue? I'm planning on living here for a long time. So it's a, it's a balance, Helena, and I'm so grateful for your question. It's something we struggled with, but this is the first time where we had to make a call that day. Oh, the same thing. Yes, Sam, do you have something? Yeah, if I had to speculate, I know you guys are asking about the funding and, and what would be what would we what would we be at risk of losing? Um, likely Geneva Road would not be one of those because Geneva Road is looked at as an ulterior alignment to I I fifteen, which is needed by Udon. Um, I would think that possibly Sixteenth North would probably be something that could be postponed even further, I guess, would, would be a, a real consideration because although it's very important for us, we have some capacity issues there. It's not really going to impact UDOT's mainline. And so if there was going to be something that they were going to go ahead and do, that would possibly be, be one just because already it's been pushed back on funding because there's, there's been other priorities. Um, so if, if I were to speculate that, that would be one that, that could be postponed even further. But I think we have to realize too, that we also have transportation, transportation commission members, um, Jim Evans, who lives in Orem is, is here as well. And I think, yeah, there is a really big picture here that, that we, that we need to look at and, and how do we do this? And, and I'll say it, um, understanding that currently now our state le legislature has a lot of contractors and developers that are there and to say that they're not there for their own needs. Uh, I don't know if you can necessarily say that, but, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to help and, and, and ultimately provide a need. And they're trying to figure out a way that they can go ahead and, 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 and give a product to kind of help fill, fill a housing need. So really we just need to get to get together and try and work that out. And this is one way of doing it. And maybe there's other communities that are needing this money. But I think for Orem, in all reality, we're in a pretty good spot right now. We don't have any eminent projects, but that's not to say that we might want to have some in improvements done on State Street. So, I mean, yeah, we, we do need to think about it and think if it is a state facility and, and would it be something that would enhance Orem and make things better? Have we kind of got, gotten in line? I don't know. But like you guys have said, I think you need to, to speak with those representatives to, to help you out with that. 
can I make a suggestion for a change on the document that I think would improve it greatly and I would approve of? And it makes things a lot simpler. It seems to me what the state is trying to do is encourage more housing. And one of those housing is accessory apartments. There is nothing in the paragraph that begins Orem's neighborhood improvement team is helping track illegal accessory apartments, etc. I would propose that that entire paragraph be left out and it was replaced with something to the effect that we will, as a city, find, define, and implement one, two, three, however many you feel comfortable with, means of encouraging accessory apartments. That's right. measurable, just... it's doable, and it takes us forward. Just... So if I can just point out that the first paragraph basically indicates that accessory apartments are already adopted and approved by ORM. We already allow accessory apartments. They're already in the books. We already don't, I mean, it's already an existing uh, thing that's already been happening for the last 10, 15 years. So this is not a new thing with the city. This is not something that's adopting accessory apartments. We've already been allowing accessory apartments for many, many years. So it's not something new. This is simply stating that we're trying to help I mean, if I don't, I'm sure all aware, we probably have hundreds of illegal accessory apartments. We as staff are not personally going out and trying to find them, but we do get citizens to call and, and let us know when they're, they're there or they're complaining about parking or whatever. So we, we deal with that as it comes in. We're not proactively going out and actively trying to find them. So I think to your point, we, we already encourage, we already uh, as best we can let people know that we have accessory apartments. It's already on the books. We already, here's the requirements. Here's what the process, get a building permit. It's a lot simpler. The state did uh, make it a lot simpler a couple of years ago, but uh, the fact is that we already allow accessory apartments. So I don't know that we're, you know, by encouraging, I guess we could still encourage. And that's part of our document as far as informing people with, uh, you know, how to document or something like that. That's something we're proposing in that paragraph. But I don't know that we need to reinvent the fact that we already allow accessory apartments. That's just my opinion. I would also point out that all of the black text is what you approved of in October. Mm -hmm. So all the black text you've already seen, it came through the process. You approved in October. We adopted it formally in October. The red text is what we've come back to propose because the state said the black text that we've already brought before you and adopted wasn't good enough. It wasn't, it didn't meet their standard of approval. And so that, I don't know if that was clear or that's, that's what you're seeing before you is the red text is what we're proposing uh, adding to qualify that standard from the state. Um, the black text with a few corrections is what you've already seen and what we've already uh, adopted as as part of the general plan, and so um, so I just want to make that clarification. Thanks, man. And Madam. <laughs> yeah, just to add to a couple of things, are we asking you to jump through hoops? Yep, we absolutely are. We're literally trying to provide a document to the state. I mean, obviously, we need to follow through on some of it. But to some extent it is, and we aren't waiting 20 years to redress this. This is literally going to be in the next 45 days that they are, the legislators already bringing forward more legislation that will impact this directly again. So this isn't set in stone in the sense that this is going to be what it is for the next 20 years. This is literally what we need for the next year or 45 days until I change it again. In July 1st, we have to do something different. Yeah. And they've already made indications that some of the consequences might be ratcheted up mm -hmm. in terms of what might happen. So it, 
is it unfair to kind of have to say we have to push us through and do this on some level? Yeah. On other levels, state giveth and the state can take away. And that's what exactly they're demonstrating. And so, and I go back to what I say, I think it would be really nice to workshop with the city council sometime and talk about accessory units and have further discussions about that. I think there's some other planning issues that I think fall, I've said this over and over over the last year, that would be nice to, as a group, work together and talk through what some of the plans are, you know, for some of these things too. Right. So. I, if I could say something, I, I, I remember well when you presented these suggestions to meet the state's requirements and they were carefully thought out. You, you determined in uh, consultation with others, these would be the ones that are most acceptable to us. Uh, they were clearly stated and then then we get this back. And uh, I think your group has done, a, with your leadership, has done a wonderful job in putting this together. I do think uh, that the state, as I'm reading the news reports of the legislature, which just began their session yesterday, uh, already in the works are legislation that's going to create more uh, affordable housing, 30,000 uh, units short in the state of Utah. So there's thinking that groups like ours get in the way of common sense. And so they're, they're going to put more teeth and uh, affecting what they want to see done to, to create this additional housing. Amen. <laughs> yep. Mike. Uh, Jim kind of covered it, but I, I think what I keep hearing is we are the frog in the hot pan and they just keep ratcheting up the heat. So we can either jump out or we can croak. So <laughs> you mean not croak out loud, just die, you mean, right? Yeah. They'll either we jump out or they'll kill the city. Yeah. That's really what it is. And if we don't say things to our legislatures and wa watching what's happening with our, you know, that's on us too to push back because the citizens should have a say. I really, I really do think we should. We can't just let the state do whatever necessarily. We, they should have to check by us. And I think that there, it needs to be a process and we're identifying these things. And if we're concerned about them, the people who really need to be addressed are our state legislatures. All right, any, uh, any other comments or questions about this item before we move forward with it? We already opened and closed the public hearing. So now it's about making the recommendation with the change of language. And um, do you want, do you, yeah, I want you to use. Okay. You have it. You have it all, right, all yeah. outlined right there. I'm just. I'm going to read this, but can you flip back to the other slide when I hit that point? Because I needed the first part too. Yeah. Okay. But can, so can you go back to the other one and then switch to this? Once one? you finish okay. it, switch back. So I make a motion that the Planning Commission forward a positive recommendation to the City Council amending portions of Chapter 4 housing of the Orem General Plan, updated Section 4.42 pertaining to moderate income housing with the modification that we strike um, from strategy number one implementation set paragraph, we strike and how to report illegal units. I second that motion. Aye. 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 Great. This is items taken care of. And Ryan, do we have any, any other city business? <clears throat> um, some of you asked, have asked in the past when they get to do some planning. So I'm happy to report uh, Grant and Jason and the team have been working with MAG, the Metropolitan Association of Governments, which is in charge of station area plans and an RFP process has taken place. A uh, consultant's been hired. They will start doing the planning associated with the station area plan for the front runner. We will be getting all of you involved in that and having that, that'll be a community driven process. So get ready to participate. We're probably, Jason, what do you think? A month away contracts, maybe six weeks? About six weeks. Is that the South Station down by the yes. UVU land? That's when we refer to yes. on 8 South? Yes, that okay. will be the first phase. Mm -hmm. um, many of us believe it's already a station area plan based on what's done there, but that will be uh, exercise it 
the community will go through as well as the planning commission. Um, in addition to that, there were hearing that, well, it's probably too soon for me to say, but there will be some other planning efforts coming by direction of the city council that we'll be getting involved in as well. So great. We're excited to get something going here and get another state mandate process done. So. Oh, that's great. The last mag I attended, it was very eye-opening. Very well taken care of. Okay. Well, after that, going over the minutes, we have, we, have we gone over the minutes? The last meeting, we have to approve them. Yes. Minute. Okay. Have they, I move that we approve the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, was, that, was it December, December or November? Yeah, third or whatever it was. Something, something mid-December? Yes. 17th. 17th? Mm -hmm. 7th. 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 Yeah, it was early December. Yeah. I move we approve those minutes. <laughs> I second. Right. Aye. 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 Right. Well, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second. Right. Jim. Aye. Helena. Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, everybody. Is that your phone or mine? No, it's mine. I can't tell. No, but I didn't know. So. But I figured if you guys were going to vote for your minutes, I might as well. That's a better way. Yeah, I agree with that. My neighborhood? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it must be an HOA. I think it's the HOA. Yeah. So what are, so why does the HOA get to override what the don't, state forums has? I don't think the HOA really has the authority to do that. They might. So I live in an HOA as well. Yeah. And there's certain criteria that people don't meet. And nothing's done about it. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess uh, I don't know how, how uh, 